Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? <laughs> oh, I am so delighted to hear it. And me? Oh yes, on top of the world. Thank you for asking. And it's a lovely day today here in England. We are approaching summer very fast which means we'll have sunshine for part of the day and then winter will come very quickly. <laughs> Perhaps not. Perhaps we'll actually get a really good summer this year. And what have I been up to? Hmm. Well, I have been tending my garden. I have gooseberries, raspberries, strawberries, all coming along and looking very nice and very tasty. I have apples and pears in my garden. I also have runner beans, green beans, you know, the climbing ones. And I have carrots and potatoes and radishes and spring onions and tomatoes and cucumbers. Oh, yes. Mm. I do like a garden I can eat. <laughs> So, where are we off to on this lovely late spring day here in England? Well, we're going to go into the Caribbean. Now, Carlos J. wrote me and he said, please fly around the Caribbean islands. And I'm more than happy to do that. In fact, I've done that, but in a propeller plane lots of times in the past. Now, when I asked him which island was the most important island for him and which should be the prominent one, he said it was his native Puerto Rico. So I like that one. And that is the destination. And for a starting point, he suggested that we start out from St. Martin, which, of course, is famous for its Maho Beach, you know, that's the one where all the aircraft come in and they land 50 feet above all of the people on the beach. <laughs> it's a great sight. It's very exciting if you're a tourist there. And that's one of the biggest attractions. Now, Puerto Rico, of course, is famous for a lot more things. It has beautiful golden beaches. It has magnificent ancient buildings and forts and it has a terrific history all well worth exploring there now we're going to follow a rather different flight today i couldn't find any jet routes between the two points so i did find Air Flamenco Flight 7101, and that's F4-7101 if you want to look that up on Flight Aware. Now, Air Flamenco flies these twin-engine aircraft. Now, if you notice, these are high-wing aircraft. They will land and take off on a lot more surfaces and a lot more places than a 737 will use. So we're going to follow the same route, but of course we will be flying at a different cruise altitude. And these aircraft, by the way, are aircraft that I'm rated to fly. I'm a commercial pilot and with all the other, you know, fixings, but only for propeller aircraft. I'm not jet rated, so that aircraft is a very nice aircraft. Now, I've got some great sceneries for today. St. Martin, which is TNCM. That airport scenery is by 
Fly Tampa, very detailed. And Puerto Rico TJSJ is made by Latin VFR. Again, very detailed scenery. Okay, we know where we're going. We know where we're starting out from. So let's go on into pre-flight and see what sort of a flight plan we can put together, shall we? Well, here we are in Flight Aware, and we're looking at the route of Air Flamenco Flight 7101, and here are the designators that you can see right there. It, this particular flight landed over 14 hours ago. It departed from St. Martin, and it landed at San Juan, Puerto Rico, and it was 16 minutes early. So, must have had some nice tailwinds behind it. Now, here's the route that this little aircraft took. Now, remember, this is a propeller-powered aircraft and therefore did not go above 10,000 feet, as you can see right here. Look at that. See, 10,000 feet, that was their, their altitude. Anything above that, and they would either have to be pressurized or have, of course, oxygen masks available. But this is the basic route, and it's a straightforward run all the way across here to get to San Juan. There's a lot of flights in the history, so you can check out their history. And here you can see they were at 178 miles an hour, 10,000 feet, and there is the route that they flew. Now, whether we will get the same is, I don't know. So looking at Wendy, and here we are. Here's our origin right there. This is the island. There's the runway right there. Look, that wind is sweeping straight across. So the wind is 060 at 8 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, few clouds at 1600, scattered at 3500. Temperature is a lovely warm 26 degrees, oh yes. Q&H 1017, so that's not bad air pressure around the area. Now the terminal aerodrome report, that's the TAF here, it says it's going to be wind 08010 knots. It's what they're expecting. So in all likelihood, there will be, it will be this runway that will be in use for taking off. That's runway 10, of course. And that is the runway where they come down and they land right on the beach. Right here, there's the beach that they all love to stand there as the aircraft come to land right directly over the top of them on runway 10. So we're going to be departing probably on runway 10. And the only thing that we have to be concerned about, of course, is this great big hill at the other side. We're going to have to make sure that we follow the procedures for departure, which entails a strict right turn to get out of the area so we don't run into the mountain. <laughs> now here's our destination. Here's San Juan, Puerto Rico. And it is a beautiful island and the beaches, as I say, are absolutely magnificent. So wind is showing at 160 at three knots, very light at the moment. Visibility, 10 statute miles, cloud at 2,500 feet, and the altimeter is just a little bit above standard at 30.01. So if the wind on the terminal aerodrome report is showing 100 degrees, well then, in all likelihood, we will be landing on this runway right here. And which one is that? That is runway eight. 
according to this, runway eight is going to be the longest one anyway, and is probably would be the safest one for landing a commercial jet on. Okay, we've got the basic wind. It looks pretty standard and steady. So we'll go into sim brief and here we go, Ryanair, we are 186 and we're departing from TNCM, TNCM, and we're going to go to TJSJ, so TJSJ. I don't know what the TIST alternate is, but we'll find out in a moment. There's our airframe. Now that's going to be telling Simbrief that we are a jet and not a prop, and therefore we will have a flight route planned accordingly. Here's our registration. There's the crew cruise profile. Schedule flight time. This is from door to door. It says runway 10 for departure, runway 8 for arrival. Well, we thought that. We are, of course, going to be full of very happy passengers because we have one ton of, what are we having? Of course, champagne and caviar. <laughs> and there's the route. Pretty much the same as the one that we saw on Flight Aware. And it's showing that it is 168 nautical miles. Now, this is the route that we are given. And here is our alternate. And that is King. That's the King Airport on Charlotte Island right here. That's in case anything goes pear-shaped. All right, let's go up and we'll save this. I don't know what altitude will be given, but we'll find out. And we'll generate and go ahead. Well, here is the flight plan that they've given us. We're going to be flying flight level 260. Here's our block fuel right here. Airtime is at 48 minutes. There's our route. If this is the route that we actually take, I will be uh, putting it in as is in the description box below. But if there are changes, I will put the actual route that we fly in the description box. And looking at the details, here we are. There's Ryanair 186. This is our flight cruise altitude. And TIST, there's our alternate, should things go pear-shaped. And of course, there is the actual route that we'll be taking. We're going to need to know that we are cost index 6. We will need to know the average wind. We'll need to make sure that we have... 5.3 metric tons of fuel on board and <clears throat> of which 2.2 will be reserves and the trip and taxi will be 2.4 metric tons. No re tankering recommended. And this is the coding for the full trip which I'll place below in the description box with any corrections if necessary. Here's the wind information for our descent. At 20,000 feet, that's the direction and the speed of the wind. 15,000 feet, there it is again, but this is a slightly different. And at 10,000 feet, you can see that the wind direction has changed and the speed has dropped. And here's the chart. There is no significant weather in the area at all, so we should have a beautiful flight. Since we're flying at 26,000 feet, this is the closest to it, 240. And you can see that we are going to have headwinds all the way across. 
But the journey isn't all that far, so we're probably not going to feel much of it at all. And here is the cruise profile, starting out here from St. Martin, climbing all the way to top of climb, and then down into San Juan, Puerto Rico. Lovely. Well, we're in for a lovely trip. I think the weather is going to be magnificent, so I hope you brought and packed your suntan lotion with you. All right, let's go into Navigrap charts. Right, we click on flights, new flight from Simbrief, and we bring in the latest one that we just did, and there it is. There's our route. Clicking on this, we open up the charts list. We're going to need, of course, the airport information and parking stands. And looking at those, we're going to be somewhere up around about here. Let's see. Probably B1 or A1, I think, is going to be our departure point, but we will have to see. But here are the parking spot coordinates for the FMC. Now, if you notice up here, we have not been given a departure SID, so we won't be using any of these. We'll be simply taking off, making our turn, and then going straight onto our route. Going over here to our destination, opening up the charts list, we're going to need to know the airport information. We're going to need to know the parking gates. And we haven't been given an approach, but we do know we're coming in on runway eight. So let's look at that. We are going to be ILS localizer runway eight, pin that, and let's have a look at that. It looks like the pattern is going to be we come across and then we make a standard left hand pattern for landing right there on 08. So San Juan will be on the point. As you can see is SJU is right there. So we do go right to the VOR. And then we will make our pattern around to come in like that. There's the SJU approach. So you can see how it would be and comes in like this. Okay, we have all of our information. We have the information on the bottom, so we are now ready to go on into the cockpit and get ourselves started. Ah, there you are, Carlos. Do come on in. Siente de por favor. Sit down, take your seat. We are getting ourselves ready to depart from St. Martin right here. And it is beautiful scenery. This, of course, is by Fly Tampa. And the, I, in the settings, I put all of the tick marks in all of the boxes. So I have animated everything in here. I've got animated vehicles. Oh, and they are kamikazes. Oh, running hither and yon. I've got animated people who I'm not sure what their function is, but they're keeping well out of the way of the kamikaze buses that are rushing past me at the moment. Now, I'm at stand B1, Bravo 1. And... The weather here is sort of cloudy and we're under a cloud at the moment. And that made me go out and check the clouds where I'm at in England. And why? 
because today is my domestic day. I do the wash. I, I know tough guy like me doing the wash, but I have to do it once a week whether it needs it or not. <laughs> So I had the washout on the line and thinking, well, if there are clouds over here in magnificent St. Martin, I'd better check to see if there's anything coming my way here. And sure enough, there was this great cloud coming towards me and it looked very suspicious. So I brought the wash in, everything's done, had a lovely breeze this morning and it dried everything out nicely. So I think I may have rescued my wash for the day. So one good point there. Let's hope now I don't crash or hit anything, right? <laughs> I'm going to show you this scenery here because it is magnificent. Over here on the left, you can see there's a kamikaze vehicle looking for somebody. Oh, and there's the buses. My goodness. You can see the detail in all of this. It really is absolutely magnificent. And this, of course, is Fly Tampa for St. Martin. And this, where we are, is TNCM. And if you look down there, you can see there's a a fellow hiding behind the van and he's coming out. So we have animated people in here and it is very detailed. But here's the good news. All of this high detail crash, crash. <laughs> it just crashed through everything, didn't it? The, I am using 27, 28 frames per second here which is very good considering I have all of the stops pulled out. I have everything ticked for detail and I'm using 4K monitors on here, 4K, ultra high definition and they're being run by one RTX 3090 card and it's running all three beautifully at 27, 28 frames per second. Beautiful, wonderful scenery. I've got the fuel in. I've loaded it up with the required fuel that we needed. I kicked the tires, made sure that they're inflated. I also washed the windows. Don't you think that they're clean? Look, look how clean they are. <laughs> and I've made sure that the stairs are down and the passengers are going to be coming along the self-loading cargo and getting themselves boarded. So we need to get ourselves ready here. And the first thing I need to do is turn on the battery, make sure that we have enough voltage up here. And then we turn on the fuel pumps to get the fuel going around and ready to feed the APU, which I've just activated. Now, the dial here will start to climb in just a moment. Let's see if I can show you what this looks like. There's the dial, and you can see that the low oil pressure light has come on and switched off. You can see the, the gauge is climbing. This is the engine gas temperature. In a moment it will start to descend and when it stabilizes then I'm going to be looking for this light to come on to tell me that I can then switch to APU generator and there it is so now I click that and I now have 150 15 volts showing on my voltmeter there. So that's how the APU starts. So now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to turn on the IRS. This is the GPS system for the uh, aircraft. 
I'm going to turn on the galley, always in hope of getting a cup of tea. Emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. Over here, I'm turning on the left and the right window heat. Yes, I am turning on the probes. It's an old habit from flying propeller aircraft, but I do it anyway. And then I turn on the hydraulic pumps. Over here, the forward service hatch light is on and the equipment light on, meaning that the air stairs are down and the door is open. Then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, turn on the recirculating and the packs and listen. There's the rush of air conditioning going in because outside air temperature here today is 26 degrees Celsius. And then I'm going to turn on the steady light to let people know that we're in here getting ourselves ready. Right, we have everything looking good across the board. So now it's time to program the FMC. So I'm going to clear the message at the bottom. And up here, I'm looking to see that the air rack is in date and the program is current and that there is no error. Position. We are starting out from TNCM. So TNCM. And we are at gate Bravo 1. Let's see if it's in there. B1. And it is. And checking the airport information and the parking stands, B1 is 18026 and 63069, which is correct. So I put that into the temporary and then activate it here. And that puts our starting position for the GPS. Go to the route. And here we're putting our start, which is TNCM. And we're going to go, of course, to TJSJ. TJ and SJ. We are Ryanair 186, so RYR 186. Then I go to the next page, and this is where we put in our route. The first thing we do is we go direct to PJM. So PJM. And then we take the Bravo 520. So Bravo 520. And that will take us then to STT. So Sierra Tango Tango over there. And then we take the RTE-6, so RTE-6, and that will take us to SJU, San Juan, so SJU, and that is it. So we activate that, execute, go to the fix now. And we'll put in TJSJ. Because that's where we're going to. And we want a 4 mile circle. We want a 10 mile circle. And we want a 30 mile circle around our destination. And then we go to descent. Go to forecast. Transition level at in Puerto Rico is the same as in the United States and it's 180 so we'll put 180 in there the altitudes that we want are for flight level 200 20,000 feet for 150 that's 15,000 feet and for 100 which is 10,000 feet Q&H at our destination is 1016 so 1016 then the information at flight level 200 it is 258 at 15 so 258 
at 15 and at 15,000 it is 225 at 9, 225 at 9 knots and at 10,000 feet it is 162 at 7 knots. 162 at 7 knots. And we execute that. Go to departures. Now, here we'll tune in to the ground and get our clearance. And we are departing to the west. Juliana Ground, Ryanair 186, ready to taxi west departure. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 10 using taxiway Alpha Bravo Alpha contact tower on 118.7 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 10 using taxiway Alpha Bravo Alpha Ryanair 186. All right, we have our clearance. We are running on runway 10 and. We execute that and we go to departures and arrivals again and we go to San Juan. The proposal is that we're coming in on ILS 08 and we're using the SJU execute that. Now we go to legs and this is where we need to go through and check on our roof. Now I'm going to switch to plan and that brings this one up and then I'm just going to go through each of the steps to show if there are any problems with the route. There's Chaka, there's San Juan, goes out, swings around and comes back. Now I'm going to do something which is a little different. I'm going to put in, I'm going to go back to this chapter. I'm going to put in a fix out here so that I can go downwind on the left downwind leg there. So I'm going to put in SJU at the bottom. 293 and 4 miles and I'm going to put this after SJU so I'll put it in there and then I'm going to put in another point and it's going to be the Wesson point only here I'm going to put Wesson down there and I'm going to put Wesson in and it's going to be 348, 348 at 4 miles. And then I'm going to bring Wesson up here. I'm going to take the Wesson there and bring that up on top. Go next page, bring Wesson up to that. And now we have as you can see, we have made a route that we can swing around to join the final at that point. So that's essentially what we, we've done. Switching back to map, I'm now going to go to put the weather on here, data. I'll put terrain on yours in case there are any big mountains and put that on. Now I'm switching on the TCAS and switching to RTO. The decision height in San Juan is 311, so I'm going to put 311 on the barometer here for our final. I'm going to go for 20 nautical miles on that. Right, our cruise altitude is 26,000 feet, so I'm going to go to 260 on this. I'm also going to put 26,000 feet in here. This is for pressurization, something that 
tropical air doesn't have, but we do. And I'm leaving the landing altitude as zero because the airport elevation that San Juan is only nine feet above the sea level. Everybody's on board, so I'm bringing up the stairs and closing the door. I'm now going to switch off the yaw damper and the light went out. Our departure course is 096. So I'm going to put 096 in here for our departure. And 096 over here. And I'll do yours as well, if that's okay. All right, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to perform the initialization. So we have five thousand three hundred and thirty eight kilograms of fuel on board of which reserves are going to be two thousand two hundred and thirty one the trip and taxi is two thousand four hundred and twenty five and that makes four thousand six hundred and fifty six or four point seven if we round it out so four point seven reserves two point two cost index is six Double-click this, and that will give us the uh, balance of the calculations. We're flying at 260. Our cruise wind at that altitude is 261 at 10. So 261 at 10. Transition altitude, again, is 180. That is the standard in... Puerto Rico. Execute and one limit. We are 26 degrees outside. Wow. We are flaps 10 for takeoff. I'm double clicking this and it says the center of gravity is 23.6 which is good. Trim is 4.79. One click on each of these gives me then the value for V1. Rotate and V2 lift off. So now I'm going to put 145 up in here. Good. Now I'm going to put the flight director on here and on there. I'm going to push the VNAV and the LNAV and we have a good flight plan. So push that up, that up, that up and we'll push those up too. Right, now let's do the checklist at this point before starting the engines. And when we do the pushback, we'll be pushing back. Our nose will go to the left and our tail will go to the right. So fuel is correct, windows all locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out, MCP is programmed and all correct. Takeoff thrust is correct, takeoff speed's all done, CDU pre-flight from rudd air on trim free and check. Taxi briefing is done, anti-collision light is now going on. Right, I've now got the Navigraph chart working and you can see it right here. So you can see our location right next to the terminal. And the control tower is over there to our left, and the radar is on top. So now, <clears throat> we're ready to do our pushback. So, which engine would you like to start today, Carlos? Is it a or a derecha? Number, num numero uno or numero dos? You'd like to do number two first? All right. In that case then, I'm going to switch to generator two up here, and we're ready now to start. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for push and start. Tail to the right. Copy that. Ready for push. 
push tail right. Please spring brake, please. And parking brake is off. And now I'm turning off the air conditioner in order to Which have released. enough juice to spin the engines. And over here, we'll see in a moment the engine procedure. Brakes released, here we go. All right, switching now to engine number two to start. The start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 winding up and climbing very nicely. When this gets to 24, then I will be bringing in the fuel on the engine. It's coming up, and there it is, bringing in the fuel. Wow, look at the detail out there. That is really, really good. My goodness me. Anyway, the engines are winding up. There's the engine gas temperature. Look how rapidly it climbs. And we should hear the engines. There's the engine. Now, I'm looking for 115 volts to appear up here. There it is. So now I'm switching to engine number one to start. And the start valve has opened. The N2 is winding up very nicely here. And when this gets to 24, then I'll bring in the fuel. Coming up close. And there it is. Bringing in the fuel. Engine gas temperature. Push back complete. Park brake, please. Parking brake is on. We're looking for the low oil Break pressure set. light to go out. There it is. Engine gas temperature is rising very good. Getting a good start there. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. And now I'm looking for 115 volts up here. We have 115 volts. Now, as soon as this stabilizes, and that it has, now I'm going to switch to the generators of the main engines. And I'm now going to turn the air conditioning back on. Turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. So we are all set now to make our taxi, but let me show you some of the detail of this. Now here you can see a slightly different view of St. Martin Airport than we had before. And we're going to go taxi down in this direction. But look at the detail. And yes, there's animated people over there. Really, really well-designed airport this. And this, of course, is by Fly Tampa. Right, I'm going to go now to flaps 10. Verify the takeoff speeds. And no changes there. Right, let's just do the check. After start is generators are on. Pro heat is on. Anti-ice not required. Isolation valve is correct. Engine start levers idle. Detent flight deck door closed and locked. Recall is checked. Flight controls are checked. Flaps. We have green lights. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake is RTO. Speed brake lever is down detent. Ground equipment is clear. Although there are some kamikazes loitering about and we'll have to watch out. Okay, we need to go down there, turn right, and go towards Maho Beach. So, attendance. Hang on, taxi lights are now on, and look left, look right, make sure everything is clear. Give a little boost to the power to get ourselves unstuck. Way over. So, Carlos, what do you 
think? This is lovely scenery, isn't it? Oh, by the way, there's an animated windsock for this scenery. Wow. Now that is impressive. I'm wondering if we're going to see any animated tourists over there on the beach. That's, that would be interesting. Oh, and there are animated birds as well as animated people. Really is detailed. And there's the dude's hotel over there. Wow. Ah, and yes, there's the tourists, and they are animated. How about that? Okay, I need to contact the tower and request takeoff clearance. Juliana Tower, Ryanair 186, Lydia, runway 10, west departure. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 10, departure to the west, approved. Cleared for takeoff, runway 10, Ryanair 186. All right, we are cleared for taking off. and. Before I do that, I want to show you the There's a few You can see them gathering over here Vehicles and everything else These are actually animated people We may see a few more as we get closer Clear to land, runway one zero World travel one four one one all right, we're moving into position. There is an aircraft out there that's been given clearance to land, but we're going to have to make sure that we... take off before. And there we go. All right, all lights are on. Engine start switches are on, attendance and the clock is started, so N1 power, jogger button, full power and we are rolling.
free champagne and caviar is being served in the main cabin. So, Carlos, go ahead and grab some of that, will you? And enjoy it. And as soon as we are on our approach to San Juan and getting close to the VOR, I'll give you a shout so you can join me back in the cockpit and we can land at San Juan Airport, okay? See you in a few minutes. We're on our way now, going up, we'll get 
to the Wesson 2 and then we'll swing around, come in on final to land on runway 08. Now, this of course is pointing away, so we are going away now from SJU and but we will encounter it as soon as we make our turn then the pointer will be up at the top again. Right, we are 5,200 feet and descending. Everything is looking good across the board. We have flaps two. We'll go to flaps five when we make our turn. Now that we're below the cloud level, everything is looking really nice and clear out here. And the beaches. I've got to go and do some paddling while we're here in Puerto Rico.
out a marker. Resetting the altimeter to 3,000 feet but in case of a missed approach. And we are two white and two red, we are on course. We have a crosswind. We have a crosswind, 15 knots. Could get a little bumpy as we cross over this water and then 1, cross 000. over the land. 1,000. San Juan? I don't know if we're crossing over the top of your house. scenery this. This is made by Latin VFR and my frame rate is 17, 18, 17, 18 just flickering back and forth. There's the other one taking off. Pacific R301 contact fanway departure on 119.4 well, let's one see. Point four, Pacific, three, zero, one. We need to go over there to the right to 
one of the Delta parking stands. ourselves a, a turn here. Not sure what the stand numbers are here but we'll Ah, number three, that's our stand. Okay, we're pulling in to number three. Everything looks good. Off, off, off. TCAS is off. Passengers are disembarking, so fuel off, APU off, battery off, and shutdown is complete. Well, Carlos, we did it. We landed. Not a bad landing, considering I had a bit of a crosswind there. But this is beautiful scenery, and it's by Latin VFR. Now, obviously, you know this airport a lot better than I do, so you'll have to tell me whether or not the scenery is as accurate as it is here. But my frame rate is excellent. I'm looking at 1819 now. So, and that is with full 4K monitors and all the stops out. Beautiful scenery. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the flight. There was some cloud en route. Yeah, I know that's not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. I prefer blue skies when flying over the Caribbean. It's a little different for me flying in this over the Caribbean because we got up to 26,000 feet. Normally, I would not have been above 10,000 feet on all the flights I made because that is usually about the most comfortable altitude to fly when navigating all the islands. But it's nice to be back in the Caribbean just for a day. Okay, thank you for the suggestion, Carlos. I do appreciate it very much. And everyone else, I hope that you will join us once again on Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.